Right now, thousands of people in the Fox Valley are still without power after violent storms downed trees and power lines over the weekend. And tensions are rising in the Persian Gulf over a new claim that Iran broke up a CIA spy ring. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll get to those stories in just a moment. But first, officials with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration confirm they've opened up an investigation into two fires at Madison Gas and Electric substations. Just into the Channel 3000 Alert Center, a spokesperson for OSHA said the organization has six months to complete its investigation. To No further details will be released at this time. The fires happened Friday morning at a facility off East Washington Avenue and shortly after at a substation on the UW-Madison campus. During a news conference, mg &E executives said the substations were electronically connected and they believe the fires were related. There were no injuries. More comfortable weather this week compared to last week. Chris Reese over at the Weather Center can actually breathe again outside. <laughs> yes, you can. It's like a breath of fresh air stepping out there. The humidity is a lot lower. Temperatures are a lot cooler as well. And it's a beautiful day without the risk for showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures right at 72 degrees. Winds coming out of the north at uh, 14 miles per hour. And it's a strong northerly wind that's going to stay in control uh, at least for today and into tomorrow. Check out the dry air that we have in place throughout the upper Midwest. Dew points and some places have dropped into the upper 40s. It's starting to feel like fall when you get the air that dry. But when you look at the dew point comfort meter, folks, we're going all the way down to comfortable and very comfortable at that. It's a very pleasant feel as you step outside with the dry air in place. There are no chances for showers or thunderstorms either. So if you were looking for that perfect day to get outside and enjoy the great outdoors, today is that day. And to be truthful, this week is the week. As you plan your afternoon, expect more sunshine. Temperatures topping out around 78 will cool down into the upper 50s overnight tonight, Mark. Of course, I'll have that full forecast coming up in just a few moments about how long does this dry spell last? I'll answer that coming up. Perfect summer weather, that's yes, for sure. It is. All right, thank you, Chris. Right now, thousands of people are still without power in northeastern Wisconsin following severe storms over the weekend. This is a video from Appleton, where 14,000 people are still in the dark due to downed trees and power lines. The National Weather Service has confirmed nine tornadoes touched down across the state from Friday night through Saturday morning. Governor Tony Evers has declared a state of emergency, allowing the National Guard to help local officials with cleanup. Strong winds are to blame for the collapse of a construction crane in New Jersey. It came down onto a house and a student apartment building across from Rutgers University last night. The apartment building and a house next to it are significantly damaged. There were no injuries. The University of Wisconsin system will pay a former student $325,000 to settle claims that a professor sexually harassed her. The student sued in October, alleging UW Oshkosh failed to take action against former art professor Michael Beats. A 2015 UW, uh, UW Oshkosh investigation found Beats violated system policies. He resigned in June of 2015 and got a job at the University of Colorado Boulder two months later. The Dane County Medical Examiner has identified 56-year-old Valerie, Valerie Flogel as the bicyclist killed in a crash on Highway PD yesterday afternoon in Verona. According to an incident report, Flogel failed to stop at a stop sign on Military Ridge State uh, uh, the bike trail, that is, and drove into a Ford Escape. The crash is still under investigation. The Madison Police Department is seeking an uptick in residential crime. Officers say they always see an increase in crime during the summer months, and this season, open garage door thefts are the number one issue. That's when residents accidentally leave their garage doors open, inviting thieves into their homes. To cut down on this crime of opportunity, officers are encouraging neighbors to get a garage buddy, a neighbor who has your cell phone number and can text or call you when your garage door is open or something's amiss. It's not only looking out for yourself, but looking out for the neighbor that's maybe across the street on either side of you, um, getting to know them so when they go on vacation, you can help look out for their, their property as well and just to keep an extra eye on the place. 
In an effort to foster better relationships amongst neighbors, MPD is hosting a Good Neighbor Night at their Midtown station tonight. The event begins at 630. It's free and open to the public. Tensions continue to escalate on the Persian Gulf as Iran now claims it broke up a CIA spy ring and arrested 17 Iranians recruited to collect information about the country's nuclear and military sites. Officials say some recruits have already been sentenced to death. President Trump fired back on Twitter this morning, writing, The report of Iran capturing CIA spies is totally false. Zero truth, just more lies and propaganda. Overnight, Iranian state TV also released video that claims to show crew members of a British-flagged oil tanker that Iran seized in the Strait of Hormuz on Friday. A cameraman can be heard telling the men what to do, but it's not clear if the 23 crew members were under threat. At the Navy patrol boat, this is British warship Foxtrot 236. Please confirm that you are not intending to violate international law by unlawfully attempting to board the MV Senate. Tehran accuses the crew of various violations, but Britain claims it did nothing wrong. More local news now. A Wisconsin-themed boutique store on State Street is officially closed. Tailgate was located inside the Hub apartment complex, selling graphic T-shirts with vintage logos and Badgers gear. It was in business for three years, according to the store's Instagram account. They plan to open a new store in Milwaukee in September. There's more to come on News Street Now at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today, I'm going to introduce you to a fill you up salad that may become your new summertime favorite. Yup, it's that good. This time of year, we get lots of requests for recipes that are lighter, fresher, and ones where you don't have to heat up the kitchen. So rather than suggesting just any old salad, we came up with an Asian-inspired chicken salad that is incredible. We start by sauteing a few chicken breasts that we've cut up in a little sesame oil just until they're cooked through. 
Now we take those out of the pan and add a bit more oil along with some sesame seeds and minced garlic. Once they're golden, we add some soy sauce, vinegar, sugar, and a little vegetable oil. And we'll let that simmer. That'll be our dressing. While this is doing its thing, we add some snow peas and carrots, our cut up chicken, and the dressing to our Chinese cabbage. And all that's left to do is toss everything together. And what we end up with is an incredible main dish salad that comes together in minutes. So if you're looking for a change of pace dinner idea, go online and get the recipe for our Chinese cabbage and chicken salad. One forkful is all it'll take and you'll fall in love with it. I'm Howard of the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fresh and tasty way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. Sunny and warm throughout the week. A nice change from the extreme heat and humidity of last week. Meteorologist Chris Reese has your first alert forecast next. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues and call the hotline. Volunteers will help you with any consumer complaints. The number is 608-270-2833. The service is open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials up about two points. The NASDAQ adding 50, almost 51 points. The S&P 500 up seven. Let's check in now with q 6 Farm Director Pam Yaki. How was your boogie over the weekend? Buddy, it turned out very, very well despite that heat. I just love those folks that don't look at a thermometer and still show up. In fact, we got a couple pictures from all the activities at the Dane County Fair. Friday night, we kind of started off the youth livestock auction recognizing our scholarship winners. We've got uh, four of them that were graduating this year that were actually active in the sale on Friday night. It was so hot, we didn't bring the animals into the Alliant Energy Center Expo Hall, just the champion and reserve champion, but the kids were there. And uh, boy, we still had a really good sale. I appreciate all 
all the folks that showed up and bid on animals. Then Saturday, it was the Farm Bay Boogie Tractor Parade. And look at all these folks that brought their tractors for me. Just so deeply thankful for those guys that uh, they a lot of them drove you see there's not a lot of cabs on those tractors but they still showed up and so did the little kids as I told you last week it's like a magnet when those tractors show up the kids started running for the curb and the parents were running behind them telling them to slow down it was just hilarious uh, we did step up the parade by about 10 minutes or so and uh, also left the ground just a little bit early and again like I said that was in consideration for my tractor drivers many of which got back on those tractors no cab no nothing and drove them home in that 90 degree weather we wanted to make sure we got them out of the area before any of that severe weather moved in and I'll tell you you were talking about severe weather my home farm got hit really big with that uh, rain and down uh, down uh, power lines over the weekend my home farms without power uh, two of the historically old trees on our farm went down completely and four inches of rain making everything soggy up in uh, O'Connell County markets are less than ideal today the weather is starting to turn around the markets heard about it they're backing off their commitments just a little bit but there is still a bullish undertone in the market despite those numbers we're waiting on the august 12th crop report for the next big move maybe we'll get a little action today though we're getting our crop progress report this afternoon about three o'clock central time that will tell us what happened over the past seven days time with that excessive heat and uh, how farmers are feeling about the overall quality of the crop barrel cheese today in chicago gained three quarters of a cent 171 and a quarter 40 pound black cheese was up a penny and a quarter at 179 and a quarter double a butter though dropped Two and a quarter cents, 237 and a half per pound. Now, buddy, I got to tell you, I'm going to be like vapor again this week. Tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, Wisconsin Farm Technology Days. That's where you'll catch the farm, babe. Uh, that is out in the, at Walter's Grain Farm, just outside of Johnson Creek, wifarmtechnologytodays.com if you want to uh, find out more. Or Fabulous Farm Babe on Facebook. You'll be able to see where I am if you want to catch up with me out in Tent City. Well, the weather will be a lot better for you. Oh, my goodness. I am so relieved that this is the weather this week instead of last week. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you Friday then. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Chris is here now with that forecast that everybody's going to like. Yeah. Things are a lot better out there. We're talking plenty of sunshine. The humidity, folks, has been a lot lower, too. So here's a live look from our Edgewater Sky Camera. You see the decorator clouds out there. Blue sky as well. Let's talk about how much cooler things are as opposed to yesterday. And yesterday was a cooler day within itself. We saw a high of 82 yesterday with lower humidity. We're now seven degrees cooler than 24 hours ago and oftentimes folks it's that second day after a cold front that is the coldest day and so this is going to be the coolest day of forecast uh, with it being the second day after that cold front that came through on Saturday night into Sunday 72 again right now winds coming down out of the north a lot of our temperatures are mainly into the low 70s some mid 70s showing up in some spots lacrosse at 76 Boscobel and Prairie du Chien at 77 let's talk about the dew points though a lot of these dew points are into the low 50s you have some mid 50s showing up and even mid 40s dew points. That is drier air, folks, and it feels good when you step outside. Our dew point comfort meter all the way down to comfortable, and I'll tell you what, it is downright pleasant as you begin to head outdoors. This is all thanks to high pressure that is in control. We did have that cold front that came on through. That's still bringing a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity to parts of the Ohio, parts of the Ohio Valley. In the Appalachians, but this high pressure will stay in control for us as we go through the next couple of days. Watch the wind stay out of the north, not just today, but into Tuesday. They'll stay northerly into Wednesday as well. One of the things we'll watch into Wednesday is the lake breeze trying to get into the mix, creating some storms throughout the eastern half of the state. I'm not too sold on that just because the air now is a lot drier than it has been. I think most folks are going to stay dry, but of course, we'll keep a close eye on that one. Let's go closer to home and take you hour by hour. Four o'clock this afternoon, temperatures right around 78 degrees. We'll cool down into the upper 50s tonight. With that drier air in place, the skies are going to be clear. It's going to be easier for these temperatures to drop. So don't be surprised if some folks hit the mid 50s and low 50s for those overnight lows. Into tomorrow, 
we get just a couple degrees warmer. So we'll see those highs right around the 80 degree mark and then cool down into the low 60s and upper 50s again tomorrow night as we begin to head on into Wednesday morning. This trough of cooler air is going to stay in place going through the end of this week. That ridge of heat will remain back over the western part of the country by the weekend and into early next week. It's going to try to send some warmer temperatures our direction. So we'll actually see a little bit of an uptick in our temperatures by the end of the week. However, what we won't see is the humidity, so it's still not going to feel all that bad. Again, 78 degrees this afternoon, cooling down towards 58 tonight. We'll keep those winds out of the north and west at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Check out the dry weather in our forecast, but 87 and 88 as we get you into Sunday and Monday. But another cold front's coming through, folks. So we'll see a chance of storms Sunday into Monday before we return to the low 80s uh, with temperatures back about where they should be. Although this is above average, our normal high temperature is going down. Mm -hmm. Now we have reached the peak, so we're starting to go back down. Our normal high is 81 at this point. Yeah, Saturday morning was remarkable. I, how uncomfortable it was oh, outside. I know. I'm, I, I was on the road Friday coming back from Kentucky before Saturday, and I will tell you what, I did not want to get out of the car <laughs> to pump gas. So I had my glasses on. I got out of the car. They steamed up going out yes, of the car. Yes, yes. It, it, was, it was a very hot it's day. I'm steamy. glad that is over. I am too. <laughs> Much better weather. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. Next at noon, Lisa Briggs is here from the Bruce Company taking your plant and garden questions. 270-9933. The number to call will get to your questions right after this. Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company is taking your calls at 270-9933. Survive the heat? I did. I'm glad it's over. And some plants like the heat. Some plants do like the heat. So I bought a few things that um, kind of like that hot weather. So this is a butterfly weed, um, not the one that, that feeds the monarch caterpillars, but one of the ones that a tuberosa that, that the 
adults like that the butterflies like. Yeah, they like milkweeds. Yes, yeah, this is in the same family as milkweed. Okay. There's a little pink. This is in the carnation family. And then this is my current favorite echinacea or cornflower. It's called Cheyenne Spirit, and I really like it because it has all of these colors on That's the same plant. On one plant. On one plant, yeah. So from sort of the yellow gold to orange to red, it's kind of fun. It's crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> it's a mutant. <laughs> but like sun. <laughs> it does. All right. Uh, let's get to the calls. We'll start with Joan in New Glarus. Hi, Joan. Hi. My irises are done blooming. Can I cut them off? Um, now, or do I have to wait till fall? You'll want to cut back the flowering stems, Joan, until you get to the leaves. And then I think that sort of closer to the end of the month, what you'll want to do is cut the leaves back so it's a fan of about six to eight inches if they're getting a little bit ragged. And if your iris have been in the ground for maybe three years or more, you might want to take them up at that time and divide them up and spread them out a little bit. But you'll want to do that at sort of end of July into mid-August is the best time. Okay, let's go to Tubby in Lodi. Hi, Tubby. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, what's your question? My question I had two, but Lisa just answered one about okay. the irises. Okay. The second one would be uh, the same thing with peonies. How should those be transplanted and when's the best time to do them? Peonies are a lot like iris in that they like that late summer fall move. So we generally like to see peonies um, dug out and split eh, end of August into September is the best time. So just dig out the clump, kind of lay it on the ground, get a really sharp sort of flat bladed shovel and just slice it in pieces oh, sounds violent. <laughs> and plant it out. Now peonies and iris are also alike in the fact that they like a very particular planting depth. So with iris you want those rhizomes to be right on the surface, not covered by soil or mulch, and with peonies, you want the eyes that are the little nubs at the top of the tubers to be no deeper than two inches below the surface. Otherwise, neither one will flower. Really? Yeah, really. Interesting. <laughs> Go to Emily. No, I, I mean it. Emily in Arlington. Hi, Emily. Hi. We just had a large tree sadly go down over the weekend on the south side of the house, exposing a very empty rock bed surrounding the house. Is there a good low maintenance? plant to plant and if so would now be okay like a ground cover do you want a ground cover or do you want a shrub or a tree um like a shrub or ground cover okay well now is a fine time to plant as the temperatures start to cool um, plants will start to go dormant and put a lot more energy into establishment which is a great time falls a great time to plant the one thing you have to pay attention to when you plant at this time of year is you really want to water if it's dry traditionally July and August can be dry months, and so you need to compensate for Mother Nature. Okay, we're out of time. If you're on the line, stay there. Lisa will talk to you off the air. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Here's Chris with the final check of your forecast. Hey, it's a beautiful afternoon, folks. Temperatures are in the 70s right now. I do believe we'll top out right around 78 degrees, staying mostly sunny and very pleasant. Overnight tonight, temperatures will fall into the upper 50s with low humidity. Enjoy it. All right, we will indeed. That's our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.